What's up guys, Agent here again with part 2 of our Dragon Knight tanking guide for uh, Clockwork City patch. If you guys haven't seen part 1 yet, uh, part 1 is where I go over gear sets, so you're kind of uh, how tanks gear themselves out, your selection of gear choices and combinations that you can pick out. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and watch that first, that gives you an idea of the um, what kind of gear you should kind of have as a tank. For part 2 of our tanking guide, we're going to be going over attributes, skills, and our CP point distribution. So starting off here with our attribute points. I am a Dark Elf, do keep that in mind, so I, my, the way you have your attribute points distributed might be different, um, but I will give you some general pointers on what you should be looking for in terms of um, benchmarks to hit for each resource pool. Uh, as we go through this. So I have 63 points into health and one point into stamina. Uh, so if you see here I'm wearing Torugs and Eben right now. So I have 17.7k in max magicka, 43.3k in max health, 17.9k max stamina. Now as a tank you always want to make sure your max stamina is higher than your max magicka. So that's where that one point in stamina comes in. Um, if we go ahead and look at our gear sets real quick, I also have a stamina enchant on my shoulder here. And that's also to help make sure my stamina is above my magicka. So make sure to play around with your attribute points and uh, with your enchants. Feel free to take out a health enchant for a stamina enchant on your small piece if you need to make sure if you need it to make sure your stamina is above your magicka. Uh, this is because orbs and shards no longer return magicka and stamina respectively. Uh, as of Morrowind. Orbs and shards will now return the higher of the two resource pools, either magicka or stamina. So if your magicka is higher than your stamina, whatever, whenever you activate the orb or shard synergy, you will always be restoring magicka and not stamina. We want to avoid that uh, because stamina is obviously the resource that we use when we block. So we want to make sure we always have stamina and when we use those synergies, we're getting our stamina back because that is basically our lifeline. Once we run out of stamina, we basically are dead meat because we can no longer block our enemy's attacks. But Magicka, that's kind of where we want to sit at. Around 17.7, around 18k Magicka is very good to hit. Uh, do keep in mind I am a Dark Elf, so I do have 9% extra Magicka. So uh, if you are a Imperial or a other class like that, you won't have as much Magicka as I do. If you're an Argonian, uh, which is the go-to tanking race now, um, I believe you have 5% extra magicka. You do have some extra magicka uh, in your p built in your passives as an Argonian. Um, so your magic magicka might not be as high as this. But the bottom line is make sure your stamina is always going to be above your magicka. As a dark elf, I need to play around a little bit with my enchants and my attributes to hit that. Uh, but as an Argonian or, or as an Imperial, you might not necessarily need to do as much... Uh, playing around with enchants and attribute distributions to hit that point. Now if we take a look here at uh, everything else is basically kind of uh, pointless here. Uh, so obviously you're not really going to be doing any DPS, so weapon damage, spell damage, crits, those all don't really matter. Uh, so for re regen, magic regen, we want that to be high, so that's kind of why we have the Atronach or Zamunda stone. Uh, this is because if we look at our stamina regen, you can basically treat this as zero, um, and I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm blocking here. When you block, uh, let me just use up some stamina real quick. So you see here, I'm not regenerating any stamina because I am blocking. That is why stamina regen, it doesn't really matter as a tank, because in vet trial scenarios, you're going to basically be perma-blocking. You won't necessarily be blocking 100% of the time, but you'll be blocking for at least 75% of the time. So your stamina regen, that's not really going to matter too much, um, because it's just dropped down to zero as long as you're holding your block button. See there, as soon as I un unhold the block, my stamina starts going back up again. Now this is not the case with magic. So we use up some magic here and block. See here, my magic keeps on going up even though I'm holding my block. Uh, so that's kind of why we want magic regen to be very high, because a lot of our buffs, igneous shields for example, green dragon blood, um, our armor, 
claws, purge, or range taunt, those all use magicka. So we want to make sure our magicka pools are high, especially because igneous shield is basically what helps us convert magicka to stamina. So if we go ahead and use up some stamina here and block. You can see here I'm still getting stamina back from using igneous shields because of a uh, helping hands passive in our earthen heart line, which I'm going to go over in a couple of minutes here. So that's kind of why we want to make sure our magic regen is high. So we see here I have 10,000, or not 10,000, 1,078 magic regen. Uh, health regen doesn't really matter that much. Higher is always better uh, because health regen never stops. Um, but you will be he getting healed throughout, so health regen doesn't really matter all too much ultimately in the end. Uh, now for our resistances. Our resistance cap is 33,500. So 33,500 is the resistance cap. So you can see here with Torugs, we have some pretty high spell and physical resist before any of our, um, our buffs, before our major ward, major resolve, and minor ward, minor resolve from Comet Prayer. So we want to hit 33,500 if we can. Um, if we can't, then we want to get as high, close as we possibly can. So with our hardened ward up, hardened armor, see here we are over the cap for spell, and we are at 27.6 for physical resistances. Now, when Lord Warden procs, we get additional 38.70. So, let me just re up this. So, with 38.70 added onto that. We're looking at about uh, 31.5, which is pretty high. Uh, it's not quite the 50% reduction that we'll get from maxing out our resistances, but it's pretty close. It's between uh, 48 to 49% mitigation at 31.5 thousand. Um, so that's still pretty good. Um, so even with uh, hardened armor, we're at 27.6, which is uh, 6,000 below cap. So that's about 10%. So we're looking at 40% uh, reduction. Also, if you kind of want to know how I did the math there, um, basically 660 resistances is equal to 1% damage mitigation and 1% damage reduction. So at 33.5 thousand uh, resistances, you're looking at 50% reduction. So if you take a look, uh, 33.5, uh, subtract however much you currently have, divide that by 660, and that's how much uh, off you are from the full 50% reduction. So we already went over this. We are using Atronach to improve our magic regen. And we are a vampire. So why are we a vampire? Well, that's a good transition into our skills. So we are a vampire because vampires have extra 10% regen when you are stage 2 or higher. We also get uh, damage reduction when we're below 50% health of up to 33% when we're stage 3 or higher. And that helps out a lot as a tank. Uh, the downside is you do take more fire damage. Um, however, just off the top of my head, there aren't that many sources of fire damage in vet trials and endgame content. Um, the ones that I can think of off the top of my head are uh, Helra, the top boss, if you are bringing your tank up there. And the flame spinners there, they use those deal fire damage. Um, as well as the final boss in the new trial asylum sectorium uh, his execute mechanic is fire damage as well um, however even then you have enough resistances and enough health to survive that and mitigate that fire damage um, so not really that something to worry about as a tank you can basically stay as stage three or stage four vampire as a tank and pretty much um, be all right for most scenarios so going over the rest of our skills for our front bar here, we have Pierce Armor, Heroic Slash, Igneous Shields, Green Dragon Blood, Absorb Magic, and Reviving Barrier. A Reviving Barrier is not an ultimate that we're going to be using very often. It is situationally useful. The reason why we're using Reviving Barrier is for Magicka 8, which gives us 10% extra Magicka region for every support ability slotted. So you can go with the other morph if you want Replenishing Barrier. I prefer Reviving. Um, Again, you won't use this very often. There are situations where you are going to use it. Uh, for example, in four-band content, it might be useful to have that for uh, when you're with a new group who's just starting to learn a DLC dungeon, for example, or uh, in trial scenario when your healer goes down and you need some extra uh, survivability, but you don't have magma armor slotted. Barrier will give you a little bit of extra um, survivability. 
Uh, it's not going to be as much as compared to magma armor, but it's it is an option there uh, to have. Now the other flex spot you have here is green dragon blood. This is basically where your healing ability is going to go. I prefer green dragon blood because it gives you a very large heal. It heals for 37% of your missing health. I believe the base is 30 or 33%. Uh, I know the tooltip does increase based on uh, your CP point passives. Um, so green dragon blood is the preferred slot for um, this particular spot. Now you can go with Echoing Vigor if you want. However, that uses stamina and it doesn't heal you for nearly as much because it's based off your weapon damage. Um, so it's kind of a pick your poison. I prefer Green Dragon Blood. It's just a very, very good, solid bulk heal. You know, if you're down to 25% health, pop a Green Dragon Blood and that brings you back up to um, if you manage to get a crit heal out of it, because you can crit, he you can critically heal yourself with this, you can crit heal yourself up to 60-75% health uh, with one hit of Green Dragon Blood. So, um, this is kind of a flex spot, but at the same time it kind of isn't. Now for our back bar, Inner Rage, which is the range taunt, Efficient Purge, Choking Talons, Hardened Armor, Unrelenting Grip, and Aggressive Horn. This is going to be the ultimate that you're going to be using. Aggressive Horn, it is the most beneficial ultimate that you can use as a tank due to that major force um, for 9.5 seconds. In addition, it also gives everybody 10% extra resources, which increases your spell damage, your weapon damage, um, base, just because your pools are getting higher. And the extra health also, of course, improves survivability. Now, on this bar, you have really you have three flex spots here, uh, for trials at least. For dungeons, it's really only one. Uh, but the three flex spots you have here are basically Purge, Talons, and Chains. Uh, so, uh, for dungeons, Chains and Talons are very useful as crowd control abilities. Chains that you pull uh, most enemies in, basically non-elite enemies in. And Talons make you hold, again, non-elite enemies in place. Uh, so they're very useful in dungeons where basically most of your enemies you face are going to be non-elites. Um, basically they don't have that fancy health bar. Uh, but in trials where you have a lot more mobs that are basically what we like to call elites, where they have the fancy health bar, they are pull immune and talons, while it does apply minor maim, um, it doesn't necessarily hold, hold them in place for you. Um, so for trials, other than thing grip is a flex spot, you can trade it out for another skill. Uh, Talons is also considered a flex spot in this regard in terms of trials, but less so because it does provide a nice AoE source of minor maim, which decreases damage done. Um, so, Talons, I would say, in a trials, keep, uh, but you can get rid of Unrelenting Grip in most trials. There are some trials that do have pullable mobs, and you do want to keep those uh, Unrelenting Grip. And if the last flex spot is Purge. I have Purge here, for, again, for that Magicka Aid, for that 10% extra regen, uh, but you can swap that out. Um, there are a lot of the endgame vet trials will require you to use Purge, especially the DLC ones, uh, Halls of Fabrication, uh, Asylum Sanctorium, uh, Maw of Lorcage. Those do require you to use Purge, uh, so it is. this is where you would have it if you need to use it as a tank. Uh, but in terms of flex spots, you have a couple of options here. Um, the first one being Reflective Plate. If you're going up against enemies that you know are using projectiles, spellcasters or archers, Reflective Plate is very useful. Uh, you can go with Dragonfire skill if you want, but Reflective Plate gives you minor ward, which uh, improves your survivability a little bit. Uh, but as you saw, you already hit spell resistance cap with Torugs, and you get very close with Alkosh, so it's not necessarily... Um, essential that you use reflective plate. The other option is deep breath. Uh, deep breath is used more of an AoE interrupt. Uh, any enemy that's hit while you're using deep breath that's casting is interrupted. Um, so that's where deep breath comes into play. Uh, so it is situationally useful but in those cases where you have to have interrupt many enemies at the same time. Uh, for example top boss of Hellross Citadel or the uh, the light boss, uh, I forget his name, the light boss in Law of, Maw of Lorcage. Um, deep Breath is useful to interrupt the adds or the splits uh, that you need to interrupt in order to survive. Um, 
So that is another option that you can use instead of Purge. Uh, da -da -da -da. Other options you have for that slot. Uh, if you're an off tank, you can actually go ahead and use Invigorating Drain for some extra ultimate regeneration. It isn't much, but it does help out. It gives you five extra uh, ultimate every one second or five for three seconds, so that's effectively 15 ultimate whenever you use it. So if you're an off tank and you don't have anything better to do and you're basically a buff bitch, uh, Invigorating Drain is something you could use to uh, get more ultimate so you get higher Warhorn uptime. Ring of Preservation or Turn Undead. You can choose either both. Um, this is another situationally useful ability. Um, depending on the fight, Ring of Preservation can be very useful. Uh, so let's go ahead and slot it. So basically what it is, is you put down this rune on the ground. Has that pretty much that large. And it basically provides uh, minor protection to everybody within that circle. Uh, that does max out to six total people, including yourself. So only six people can get the minor protection debuff, a uh, buff. But it does stack with minor maim, so you know that is extra damage reduction to take in place to, uh, into consideration. Now again, this is situationally um, beneficial because if we cast it again, it does have a small radius. You can see there, it's not very big. Uh, so you're going to be using this more for stack and burn fights. Uh, for example, um, Halls of Fabrication, the final boss burn phase. Uh, this is very useful because it helps protect your group. And other stack and burn fights, uh, pot uh, potentially Stone Atronach in Ethereum Archive, since you are stacked there, that does help out, uh, improves availability. Fortunately, it only hits six people, but it's better than not having minor protection at all. Another skill that you can have is Balance. Basically, you take your health and turn that into Magicka, and then you can use Igneous Shield to turn that Magicka into Stamina. So that really helps your sustain. The downside is you are using up health, and so you basically reduce the amount of healing that you do and the size of your shields by 50% for 4 seconds after you use Balance. So be aware when you are using this, you are taking damage. You can't kill yourself with this ability. They will stop you from doing that. Um, but you will have to use this uh, situation. You have to be very situ situationally aware. If you know that you can afford to take that almost 6k health hit, uh, then do so for the extra sustain. But it is something to keep in mind. Um, you really have to trust your healer to get your back. Uh, I personally only use it for Dragon Star Arena. I don't even use it when I have to sell sustain tank because I don't think that the trade-off in health for Magicka is worth uh, is really worth the risk of dying. Uh, finally, the other option that you can have for that flex spot is energy orbs. This is an expensive skill to use, so I recommend only really using it uh, if you. Uh, on easy or quote-unquote easy fights. Um, this just gives your DPS and healers some extra resources because healers can't pop their own orbs, obviously. Um, so this does help out. It does give a little bit of extra healing to your allies, too. You won't be, obviously, you won't be healing as much as the healers, but every little bit helps in certain uh, situations. Of course, the downside is it is quite expensive to use. Uh, it's uh, 4,500 Magicka, so that is fairly expensive. Uh, so those are kind of the flex spots that you can use uh, in terms of skills. Now we're going to go over our CP points real quick. This is going to be not quite as long as the rest of the stuff that we covered in this video. 64 into Arcanist, 49 to Tenacity, 28 into Warlord, 28 into Tumbling, and 61 to Shadow Ward. Now you can take the points out of Tumbling and Warlord if you want. Um, I like to have it there so it'll help conserve stamina whenever I have to break for your dodge roll. You can put them back into Arcanus, have 75 into Arcanus. You can put them back into Tenacity for some extra uh, regen when you heavy attack. Um, but this is what I found to be to be best. If you do decide to take points out, make sure to hit those jump points. Um, Basically what jump points are, are you want to get to the next highest whole number. So 11.1 .1 and 11.9, as far as the game is aware, is still just 11%. So you want to hit 12.01% if you can with your um, CP points. So you do get the, 
the next extra percentage points. That's basically what we call a jump point. So 28 is a jump point in this particular node. For our blue CPs, I have 64 into Blessed and 52 into Elfborn. This is just to help my healing done when I have I use Green Dragon Blood uh, or uh, Vigor. Uh, for Vigor, I have 37 in Precise Strikes. The rest of these are just kind of there uh, for solo play um, because my tank is also my main. This is on the PTS, but I am basing this off of my live build. Uh, so my main, this is my main is my tank. So these extra points in Thaumaturge, Piercing Mighty, those are all there just for overworld ease of use. So I'm not painlessly, painfully uh, taking out overworld trash, uh, but. If this is if your tank is simply there for endgame content, is just there purely to tank, you're not doing any quest, you're not doing any overworld, then it is worth just putting 100 points into Blessed and 100 points into Elfborn and put the rest into Piercing Precise Strikes. Uh, that's only if you aren't doing planning on doing any overworld content with your tank. For the Warrior, uh, this particular CP distribution is a one size fits most. Depending on the content you're going to clear, uh, you might want to redistribute your points accordingly. For example, um, Hell Ra, you're going to be taking a lot more physical damage, especially against the warrior, so you might want to take points out of your Magicka or your magical damage mitigation nodes and put them into your physical damage mitigation nodes. Uh, something to keep in mind, uh, play around with it. Uh, you can redistribute as needed based on the content. I have 48 into Ironclad. 44 into Thick Skin, 49 into Hardy and Elemental Defender, and 40 into Bastion. Again, that's kind of a one-size-fits-most. You can readjust as you need to based on the content you're going to clear. So that is it for part two of this tanking guide. Now we've covered gear in part one. Uh, we've covered uh, attributes, skills, and uh, TV point distributions in part two. And now in part three, we're basically going to be going over what I do when I tank. Um, that's basically going to be most likely going to be a vet trial or a vet DLC dungeon tank uh, so you guys can get an idea of how you should tank in ESO because it is very different compared to other MMOs. Uh, so that's it for this build video part two of tanking and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.